I'm just a little odd. That's OK. Um, all right, so in the next example now, we're upping the ante on our factoring. So now you guys can see we have a trinomial over another trinomial. So when Tyler's looking at this problem, basically what we're going to do is we're going to break this up, ladies and gentlemen. And you're basically just going to want to simplify uh, your numerator and denominator separately. All right, And that's really the best way I can pretty much tell you is you're going to want to factor this. And that's why the factoring techniques come so important of thinking about the terms that you know, multiply. Now, I will do one the long way. And then I'm going to do one kind of the shorter way. Because obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the more and more practice you get with this, the better we should be doing at getting, doing this in our head. So in the first one, though, let's just do this the long way. If I want to do, factor this out, I would do a times c and b. What two numbers multiply to give you a times c, but add to give me b? Remember, a is our coefficient of x squared, and c is our 2. So we have 2. And then our middle term is negative 3. So we think about what two numbers multiply to give you 2, add to give you negative 3. Well, those factors are obviously negative 1 and negative 2. Now, since a is equal to 1, I can write these as my factors, right? If a was not equal to 1, we would use the box or the grouping technique, which we, which we talked about, which I'll go over again um, later in the class, or at least in my next example. So therefore, I can rewrite this one as x minus 1 times x minus 2. That is the factored form, all right? On this one, I'm going to start doing these in my head to kind of help you guys out as far as what I'm thinking. Again, basically what I'm doing is since a is 1, I'm thinking what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6, but then add to give me positive 5. Well, obviously, if, I, if two numbers are multiplying to give me negative, one has to be negative, one has to be positive, right? And if they're adding to give me a positive, that means the larger of the factors has to be positive. So what I come up with is x plus 6 times x minus 1. And let's double check that. Does x times x give you x squared? Yes. Does 6 times negative 1 give you negative 6? Yes. Does 6 times x plus 1 times negative 1 or x times negative 1, which would be negative x plus 6x, does that give you positive 5x? Yes. So now that's my factored form. Now that I have it in factored form, is it easy to identify what my, what my restrictions are, what cannot equal 0, or what, what my polynomial could not be so the value is equal to 0? So Taylor, what is one value I cannot have? Well, what, if you put in negative 1 for there, negative 1 minus 1 would give you what, what number should I, what number if I plugged in for x right here would get, make this 0? Zero? zero? Yep. What plus 6 would make that 0? No. Well, 1. 1 plus 6 gets 0. What number plus 6 would make that 0? I don't get what you're doing down there, though. All I'm asking you is what value it would make this, what value if I plugged in for, what if I plugged in for x would make this 0? So what number plus 6 gets to 0? Does 2, 2 plus 6 make 0? Does negative 2 plus 6 equal 0? Does 6 plus 6 equal 0? Does negative 6 plus 6 equal 0? Yeah. So basically, you can see it's really just the opposite of that. So you could say x does not equal negative 6. And then what should x not equal here? Positive 1. Does that make a little bit more sense? Sure. OK, sure. <laughs> so now we have our restrictions. And now we just need to determine what can we simplify? What can divide out? And we look at these, and we pick on Jamie, and we say that, Haley, what can divide out here? We have some problems with this. Haley, what can divide out here? Jamie, can you help her out? The x minus 1s. Those divide out. They don't need to be right under each other. They divide out. So therefore, our final answer is x minus 2 divided by x plus 6, where x cannot equal negative 6 and x cannot equal positive 1. 